let's have a play with the button toggle component. So we'll say Q-button-toggle, and now we can come up here and give it some options. We'll give that an array. And the first option, let's give it a label equal to one, and then a value equal to the actual number one. And I'll copy the paste that down a couple of times, and then we can make this one two, this one three, and then the value of that two and three. There we go. We've got the button toggle component. However, when we click on these buttons, they're not actually toggling yet, and that's because we need to model some data here as well. So let's say v dash model is equal to selection, and then I can come down here and say const selection is equal to a reference, and we'll just set that to blank for now. Refresh the page, and there we go. We can toggle these buttons on and off. How cool is that? Now let's see what else we can do. We can come in here and give them all some icons. And how about we make the first one a phone icon, the second one a mail icon, and the next one a message icon, just to kind of play around with this. And there we go. Now we've got some different icons showing there. We can also dig as deep as we want into the attributes. So if we come in here, I'm just gonna space this out a little bit more so that it's easy to look at. And then I can come in here and say, adders, set that equal to an object, and then something like aria-label, and set that equal to my button label, I don't know, something like that. And now, if we open up the console and take a look at this button, we can see that that attribute has been passed right through to the button. So you have total control here. You can pass through any attribute that you like. And it actually gets even better. It's pretty insane, the flexibility we get here. We can say slot and then give this a name for the slot. So for example, one, and that means I can actually throw a slot in here for that button. A lot of people don't know this. Now we can just say template, and then we can say one. So the value we have here for slot has to line up with what we put in here for the name of the slot. And then I can just come in here and decide on what is inside of this button. So you could have a Q-chip, for example, and then we could set the label of that chip equal to one. Check this out. So now it's an actual chip with the label one. So in this case, you'd probably get rid of the label there and the icon and then take total control over that yourself. So it just kind of gives you, it gives you more freedom about what this button actually looks like, being able to sort of tap into the slot there. And this is a good, this is a great um, API because you often hit these situations where you're thinking, oh, I like the button toggle, but I feel like I need more flexibility. And with a lot of other libraries, you don't get that tiny bit of extra flexibility for those edge cases where you want more control. And then you have to re-implement the entire component yourself. Not with Quasar. Quasar always gives us that little bit of extra something that we need to make the components super flexible. So that's really nice too. And speaking of flexibility, anything else that we pass through here is going to be passed directly through the button. So let's just use a silly example. So Bob is equal to true. Let's refresh that page and take a look at this. If we jump into that button now, we can see Bob is equal to true. So that's kind of nice too, knowing that anything that you pass through here that doesn't, um, doesn't conform to the API for your options is just going to be passed directly through to the button. All right, let's see what else. Well, let's get rid of these classes here. So now this is just sitting at the top of the page. If you want it to take up all of the space of the container that it's currently in, you can say, spread and now it's going to spread all the way across and it's going to do it really nicely too making sure that things are centered properly we've also got a lot of other button related stuff so we can say no caps save it that gets rid of the capitalization we can also say stack save it and that means that the icons are going to stack on top of the labels we can also make it clearable so if i come over here and click on these buttons now, if I click on that two again, it doesn't clear it. It just keeps that value selected. But if we come in here and we simply say clearable, I can now click on that button again, and you can toggle it off as well. 
So that's really useful to know. Sometimes it's really annoying as a user when you enter some data, but there's no way for you to clear it. So I often like allowing my users to clear the data if they like. And a lot of the other stuff that Quasar has with most of its uh, data related APIs. So for example, read only, you're going to see this all over the place in Quasar. So none of this is actually going to work now. It's just for looking at and then disable, which is very similar to read only, except disable makes it a little bit clearer that you can't actually enter anything for this data. Okay. Moving on, you're almost certainly going to want a little bit more control over the color. So you can come in here and say toggle dash color and let's set that equal to green. And I might get rid of a few things here like disable and stack, save it, refresh the page. And there we go. Now it's coming through green. And of course you can change the text color for something that is toggled as well. So if you say toggle dash text dash color, maybe we can make it like a gray dash three. And there we go. That's actually really hard to tell. So how about we make it black? Oh, I wrote the word, the word test toggle text color and let's make it black. So it's a bit more obvious. And there we go. It remains black in the center. We've also just got a lot of normal button related stuff. So for example, setting the size equal to large, you can do that if you like. Padding equal to something like 32. If you want like a really big, well padded button, you can do that. That actually looks really nice. You can imagine situations where that could be cool. Another thing you can do here is say dense, if you want it to be in a tight place and then also rounded, which is going to round off those edges. Basically all of your button related stuff. So if you go check out the button API, that's also going to be available for the Q button toggle. Moving on, let's have a look at using this inside of a form. So if I select all of this, in fact, let's just do it like this Q dash form, and we'll throw this directly inside of there, hold alt, press up, and now we've actually got this button inside of a form and we can submit it. So let's say Q dash button here, and we'll say the type is equal to submit so that it's going to submit the form. And let's have a look at what happens when we press submit. Hang on, I'll put a label in here. So it's a bit more obvious. And there we go. Notice that we get this little question mark here and that's letting us know that it has in fact submitted the form However, there's no data after that question mark. So why is that? The reason is your button toggle needs to have a name so that its name can be identified when the form is submitted. So let's set that equal to selection, save it and see if it works now. We're not getting anything. Let's actually select something. And there you go. We can see that selection is now equal to two. Let's set it to three. Selection is now equal to three. So there we go. If you want to use a, a native form, you can do that using the Q button toggle component. And the last thing that I want to show you is using this component inside of a table. So if we come up here, we'll get rid of the form. We'll get rid of the name. Let's move us back to a really, really simple example. So I'll get rid of all of that. And we'll put that label back in there as well. Label is equal to one. And that means we don't need the slot anymore. And we don't need that button anymore. And I can get rid of that closing form tag. There we go back to a simple example. Now one situation where I've used a Q button toggle is inside of a table. So at the place I currently work, we've got farms and we collect farm data. And one of the things we have to be able to filter by is short fallow, long fallow, and double crop. So we want to allow the users to be able to filter based on those th three things. And by the way, short fallow just means that there hasn't been any crops in there for a short amount of time. Long fallow means there haven't been crops in there for a long amount of time. So basically the soil can rejuvenate. I'm not a farmer. I don't actually know the details. Uh, so anyway, let's have a look at what that might look like inside of a table component. We'll say Q dash table. And inside of there, we'll have a template. And then we can say top. So Quasar's got this top slot inside of a Q table. And let's just check if it works. And there we go. That's the top of the table. We'll put some dummy data in there as well. So we'll say rows is equal to an array. And we'll put an array in that array called one, two, three. And then another array in that array called four, five, six. 
There we go. It's really easy to basically mock data inside of a table by using arrays inside arrays. It's a really cool tip to know. Now we can grab this Q button toggle and throw it inside of this template here. All right. And I'll get rid of rounded and change these to short fallow. Make this one long fallow. And then I'll make this one double crop. That was the other option that we had available. And then the value might be something like a string of short fallow and the same kind of pattern for these ones. Long fallow and then double crop. All right, get rid of the icons. They don't really make sense in this example. And then we'll save that. And there you go. You can imagine clicking on these buttons and then that would filter what you're showing inside of the table. So obviously behind the scenes, I might have, for example, my rows here, which would be equal to a computed property. And then inside of here, I do some sort of filtering to make sure that this is reacting to whatever we have selected here. So that's pretty cool. And another thing I like to do is make it unelevated. So for me, the shadow doesn't quite look right inside of this table. So by making it unelevated, actually, I'm not sure I like that because it's less obvious. How about we try outline? Or is it outlined with a D? No, that's correct. Yeah. All right. I think that looks a little bit better, but you can play around with it to your heart's content. So there you go. That's the Q button toggle component. Really cool. Great quality of life component. Hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next video.